The riding of Brant includes the city of Brantford and the surrounding towns of Paris, Burford, St. George, as well as the Six Nations of the Grand River. I'm Sean Allen. Welcome to The Local Campaign. Here on the Rogers TV, it's the Brant Riding Debate, brought to you in partnership with Brant News. We have uh, eight of the nine provincial candidates running in the October 6th election here to, uh, to answer the questions that you pose to them. I'll introduce them now in uh, alphabetical order. We have uh, Ken Burns here, representing the Green Party of Ontario. We have Rob Ferguson, who's running for the Liber Libertarian Party. We have Dustin Jenner, here representing the Freedom Party of Ontario. Oh. Incumbent Dave Levac from the Liberal Party. We have Martin Sitko running as an independent in the campaign. Michael St. Amant running for the Progressive, uh, Progressive Conservatives. We have John Turmel running for the uh, new Popper Party of Ontario. And Brian Vantelborg representing the NDP. Now each candidate is going to be given a minute for opening statements and John. Well, I can say I'm very happy that Rogers has permitted color in their debate. Last time, five years ago, I was taken off because I wore my button. I can wear my symbolic white hard hat. Thanks for a little bit of color. My program basically is like PayPal. Call it PayPal Ontario, where you log on and you can open an account. And instead of pledging your visa, you can also pledge 100 hours of labor. And you can also pay it off with your visa or working it off for the government with 100 hours of labor. It's called time banking. So you'll be hearing about this every time they run out of money and they say, yeah, we'd love to do something, but we have no money. I'm going to say how we could use a PayPal Ontario to fund the gap. And that basically is going to solve almost every underfunding problem that comes up later here today. Now, unfortunately, during this campaign, I bet you're not going to hear much about the PayPal. Yesterday's exposit it says here's what Brandt candidates in the four largest parties have to say and today here's what the four largest parties have to say and all you're going to hear is what the four thanks, largest parties thanks. have to say. Thanks John. And the question comes in from uh, Sharon on email and she wants you to discuss your party's commitments to support young children and parents through early learning and childcare. Thanks Brian. John same question to you. I want to do exactly the same thing he wants to do, except I can come up with the money to pay for it, and he can't. That's the difference. Brantford can issue, Ontario can issue provincial bonds in small denominations like Argentinian <coughs> provinces did. I'd take a $10 Ontario bond if I could pay my hydro, my licenses, my fees, my taxes. So I'm saying that small denomination provincial bonds work to save Argentina in the 1980s and the 2000s, and they can work to save us here too. Uh, I believe we have Brendan on the phone with a question about veterans. Yeah, Sean, how are you? Not too bad, Brendan. Go right ahead. Actually, what I would like to uh, know is if whichever candidate gets elected in, would they be willing to take it to Queen's Park for our veterans and give back the, the rights to the veterans to be able to choose what should happen inside their legions if they would give back those rights for the men and women that fought for freedom in this country? Well, I think it's sad that the people who did the work and the fighting ended up ripped off because the fat cats ended up with all the money and now they need support from the government because they can't afford things for themselves well we can reprogram the bank's computers to get you back all the interest you paid over the years on your debts and put it back in your bank account. You just need a competent electrical engineer who can figure out how to do that, and I can. So what you've been ripped off, I can get it back, put it back, then you won't be poor anymore. Thanks, John. And Brian. Charlene? Yes. Hi, Charlene. Go ahead with your question, please. Yes. Um, Mr. Van Tilburg, I'm asking if you would support seniors who are on very low income um, and to give us uh, a better a better life than what um, the uh, liberal government has given us in the past. John, go ahead. Well, I'm sure all the other candidates are going to agree that you should have more money and you should have more support, and we all want that for you. The difference is I know where to get the money, and they don't. 
And uh, of course, they don't know where money comes from, and I do. And I would bet that most people out don't, don't know where money comes from. They don't realize it's just poker chips that someone prints up at some point. They think it's gold. Anyway, ma'am, you're poor. You deserve not to be poor. And if you vote for one of them, you're going to stay poor. How would the candidates help people like my dad who lost his job when Raymond closed? He was less than 10 years to retirement. John Turmel. Well, I must admit, I always feel like snickering when I hear my opponents talk about looking for jobs, must find work. The point is, you can't have a job without a paycheck. So you should be looking for the money to pay the people with the, for the jobs. There are lots of jobs need be done, just no money. So when you hear them saying, we must attract jobs, well, you know they're not focused on attracting the paychecks for the jobs. So what do you think the chances are being successful at finding jobs? Well, in Argentina, when the banks shut down and they went broke, they forced their governments to start printing provincial bonds, $10 bonds, and paying all the unions with bonds, all the government employees with provincial bonds, and that's how they saved their governments. Now, I admit that Latin Americans may be intellectually superior to us, but we could do it too. It saved them. I would take a provincial bond. I can pay my licenses, my taxes, my Ontario Hydro with. I don't understand why you wouldn't too. And my question is, is some of the behavior I see from our representatives, um, I wouldn't tolerate in the classroom. So what are you going to do to correct some of this name calling and so on and so forth? Okay, Michael, decorum in the house. Well, I don't think you can stop attack ads when you consider that none of them have anything good to offer. If they had something good to offer, they'd talk about it, but they don't, so all they can do is diss the other guys. I remember back in the 80s when the Liberals threw out the Tory bums, and then uh, later on the NDP threw out the Liberal failures, and then the Tories threw out the NDP failures, and then the Liberals threw out the Tory failures, and you just keep voting for the same set of three failures all the time, and you expect a different result? Anyway, no, you can't stop attack ads because it's all they got. Me, I can offer a PayPal Ontario. I don't have to attack them other than them not having a solution to not enough money. So that's it. I don't have to push attack ads. I got something great to offer. They don't. They got no money. All they can do is hope to do better. Hope you get better. I can fix it by creating the currency you need to create jobs. Can't create jobs without money, no matter how hard you look. And can you explain how and how well your party will work with the other levels of government that would be federally, municipally, as well as uh, uh, Six Nations? Yes, I would have no doubt that we all agree that we should all work together. Uh, anybody disagree? Okay, so yeah, I guess it's pretty standard that everybody agrees we should all work together. The point is, working together without a plan is pretty useless. And focusing on organizing and getting together when you don't know what you're going to do is just as useless. So maybe you ought to come up with a plan before you spend all your time getting organized to focus to work together at doing what you don't know what you're going to do yet. So back to the same problem. They're always short of money and they don't know where to come up with the money and you're going to have to go do your homework and go search for John Turmel to find out how I intend to finance things by using Ontario PayPal bucks if you want to call them that. Tax credit notes that everybody can use to pay their taxes, their hydro, their services. Now that's quality money that won't lose its value. That's what I want to do. Print up the right kind of money to create paychecks as opposed to just look for jobs. Thanks. Uh, do you think your party will provide the financial support necessary to establish a substance abuse uh, treatment center in Brantford? Well, yes. I'm not sure we need a detox center, but I appreciate the horrors of drug abuse and, and the chemicals and the prescription drugs. And it might be time to wean people off those horrors of chemical drugs by getting them on to non-toxic, never-killed-anybody marijuana. So here we are pushing chemical toxic drugs on people and complaining about it while we've banned the legal healthy alternative. Well, you go find my site, you'll see I'm an advocate for legalizing marijuana. <clears throat> Kills cancer, regrows brain cells, why it's good for, you know, for Alzheimer's victims, which explains why I'm so sharp, my opponents are so dull. And uh, I'm saying that we go herbal, we don't need these abuse centers for the chemical kids. And you won't find too many marijuana users in these abuse centers unless they're there to avoid a jail sentence. Thanks, John. Michael Sedamon.
Well, John, I'm sorry I'm dull, but... Uh, I didn't see you in particular. <laughs> uh, Danielle on Twitter asks what each of the candidates' strengths would be for a cabinet or parliamentary position. Well, I don't really think the position is necessarily all that important, but I would love the opportunity to provide the funding for all the programs that are starved of funds right now, and I think that would make me pretty much a hero. But until people understand how money works, they're going to figure that there's never enough, there's never going to be enough, and they've got to live with it that way. And uh, you don't, but then again, that's how you've been trained to believe, and you have to do homework to find out if I'm right or not, and nobody expects you to do homework anymore. Maybe your kids, but not you. So. It's worked before. Provincial bonds in Argentina. I want to pay employees of the provincial government with provincial bonds in Ontario. And that means I could have a huge hiring program because I'd take provincial bonds. And I know lots of students would take provincial bonds for paychecks, even if their parents aren't bright enough to take them yet. Uh, Jamie asked uh, uh, to know the candidate's positions, thoughts, or plans on bringing Go service into Brantford. Thanks, Brian. John Tremel. Well, I agree with everybody else that we should have go here too. And, but unlike everybody else, I want to use the idea that Argentinian provinces used in the in last 2000s by paying their employees with provincial bonds. Again, here's a whole source of currency credits that we could be paying people with and funding these infrastructure improvements and repairs. Sure, they all want it, but they got no money. You vote for them, they're going to say, I wanted it, but I got no money, sorry. What are they going to, what did they say last time? They wanted go last election too, all of them. We still don't have it. And they're always going to want go, but they're never going to have any money. So. You have to check out the Argentinian provinces who paid their employees with provincial bonds. And it wasn't the government that wised up. It was the unions who said, you're going to pay us with these bonds instead of laying us off. And the governments did. So I'm just saying the people in Argentina in general are smarter than us, not just their governments. Yes. Hi, Bill. Go right ahead with your question. I have a question about the HST. A lot of us are having a hard time making... Uh, ends meet, and are they planning on doing anything to this and uh, making any cuts to it? Well, I think that a HST, sales taxes, income taxes are about as stupid as a way of paying for government as possible. I would like it, and I believe someday it will be an asset tax. Once a year, you count up what you got and you throw in your 5%. And in that way, you don't have to keep books and do accounting for every damn hamburger you sell, which is pretty stupid when you think about it. We're a, not only a generation of clerks, we're a generation of jerks for falling these kind of taxes. So you want to have taxes where you've got to count every dollar you ever deal with? Fine. I'd rather do it once a year. Count up my total, throw in my 5% or 10, tithe. Thanks, John. Ryan asks... What do you plan to do for Brantford's hospital? Well, during the federal election, you could find my video here, which said, take cover, Canada fallout detectors turned off or blown. And I'm wearing a mask there because during April, after Fukushima, Canada got bombarded with a lot of plutonium and radiation. And that is exactly the same time as Health Canada turned off their fallout detectors. Imagine that. Health Canada turned off all their fallout detectors on March the 25th. This is the article from their website. And that means that Seattle got 150 hot particles ingested by everybody in April. Vancouver, too. They're already reporting baby death spikes in BC. There's going to be already been a 200% spike in baby deaths. So, yeah, the Fukushima nuclear uh, holocaust is the worst catastrophe in world history. They shut down the fallout detectors so they wouldn't wouldn't have to warn you about it. I'm telling you, get your baking soda before you die. But we're going to need hospitals and a lot of them to take care of all the cancers we're going to start getting real soon. Just go see my videos during the election, right after Fukushima. I'm the only candidate said, take cover. And I was out there with my mask. Now, you guys all got infected probably in March and April and May, but I didn't. So anyway, you could have wised up. You can still help yourselves by taking baking soda. I was wondering, uh, would they uh, rid of temp agencies to improve workers' rights? Okay. Well, throughout all of history, there have been job brokers who ripped off unemployed, desperate people who need work. 
It's just more of the same. Now, obviously, that can only happen in an economy where you don't have enough money and you have desperate people for money who will be able to be extorted to get a job. If the provincial government were to start up a whole bunch of public sector jobs, paying people a portion in tax credit notes and another portion, or bonds, and another portion in cash, then of course, they got jobs. They wouldn't have that extortion <laughs> possible. So these extortion rackets only happen in a situation where you have a vulnerable population and that only happens when there's not enough money in the system. So again, you're going to have to fix the money system to provide enough money to fund the gap. Otherwise, nothing can work. And you can bet they don't have enough money so that they're going to feel bad for you, but they're going to be able to do nothing for you. Uh, Maxine asks, how will the candidates help students like myself through university? Well, I'd have never gotten my degree in electrical engineering if I hadn't had a student loan. And I'm a believer that everybody, all students, should have student loans to finance their educations. And they will stay interest-free. In my case, in my generation, six months after you finish school, they started the interest on your debts and the loan sharks got involved. I would like you to be able to stay interest-free so that all the payments go against your principal and someday you do get out of debt. The only thing that keeps people in debt forever is interest. Without interest, the debt has to be paid down. So that's my angle. I'm not going to give you any freebies. I'm not going to write stuff off, but I'm going to give you an interest-free loan for your education, and I expect you to pay me back. But no interest. And of course, such debts are not onerous and are not hard to pay. You're going to pay for what you got. Thanks, John. Well, if you want more information about me, I have a Facebook page where I post a log of all my doings and activities. If you want to set up your own time bank account, person to person, you don't have to wait. Just search for Unilets, which is the United Nations name of the time bank system, and Uniset. And you'll get the instructions on how I set up my PayPal account, I mean my Facebook account, so that when I traveled in Europe I could pay with IOUs for a night back in Canada. You could do it too. We have 100 cities in Canada, 58 countries. You can set up your own time bank account. Unilets, Uniset. Finally, I'm a professional gambler at the casino, and I remember I wrote six, five years ago, and I said, you know, they're wasting money. They could be making 3500 a week more by doing something smart, letting us play quarter 50 at two bucks extra. Well, anyway, the management wouldn't let us do it, and I wrote to the Dalton McGinty, and I said, you know, this is costing you 4000 bucks a week. Well, 300 weeks later, it's cost over a million dollars. Thanks, Thank John. Thank you for liberal incompetence. Michael St. Amant. Oh.